I normally don't start the videos like this, but this comic book, the way it ended, had my blood boiling. I mean, I was all up in my feelings, and I traditionally am a person who roots for the bad guy. And saying all that, that means Al Hewing did a fantastic job. My name is Dorian, this is SEM Comics, and we are continuing our coverage of the Sins of Sinister series with Storm and the Brotherhood of Mutants, number three. Our story starts off at the World Farm, where John Ironfire has been running this place for 900 years. And not only is he still alive, but Cora the Burning Heart is still alive too. And they are discussing how Emma of the Crimson Gym of Sidorak is coming to clap them cheeks. So John Ironfire is telling Cora how one time Mother Righteous asked him what was his biggest regret and he said it was not trusting the storm and he's asking himself well can I trust her now and then Cora's like that's not what you should be asking yourself you should be asking yourself can you trust him so John and Cora leave the throne room and are walking to talking and John goes I wish X-Men wouldn't have fallen to Orphan Madrox yes people they made a chimera out of Orphan Maker and Jamie Madrox, and it killed Cable. And John Ironfire is pretty much saying he wishes that he was still around so he could seek his counsel. Now what Cora says next is so important, I'm going to read it word for word. He tell you the same thing. You're putting your faith in the devil himself, the father of all sinisters. To give back a North Star, you have long learned to navigate without. It's folly, John, and it's against our oldest ways. Even out here, at the edge of everything, we are of Morocco. We're not afraid of a life that ends. Now that statement is so important because as we go on, actually before we go on, look at this face. If you saw somebody looking like that, would you trust them? Hell no, you wouldn't. So in a nutshell, a thousand years later, John has the Brotherhood version of the Five. And who's he trusting with the DNA? Like Coral said, the devil himself. And while that's going on, we still have the Red Diamond Princess that's still on her way to clap some cheeks, but especially Sinister's cheeks. So on the next page, we see the five going to work. You got old Oda supplying the egg. You got the devil himself with the DNA sample. You got Krona the commander giving the order to live and bear life. You got Bloodroot the bone shaper supplying the veins of the limbs and the flesh. You got Jenna the mind flare taking memories from the king and supplying them to the egg. And then you got Korra the Burning Heart who's amplifying everybody's power. And with that, the goddess has returned. John Ironfire is crying and Sinister is being Sinister. So now she only has the memories of John Ironfire as he remembers her. So any memories of when she was with the X-Men or anything like that, she does not have. And Sinister, to his credit, even tells him that, like, this is not the storm that you knew. The storm that you knew is still dead. But they don't have time to worry about that part because, like Jazzy Fizzle would say, the princess is here and it's not Sierra. Now, she has a bunch of four gift chimeras. You got High Summers, Loud Hailer, Hot Claws, and Sage Advisor and they are wrecking shop you got emma who you got people referring to as the headmistress and she's like yes quite literally is getting into some kind of bath solution and as the people are drawing her bath they're being killed on the spot and we see that she is the sinister diamond centerpiece of a huge robot of herself equipped with a diamond whip for that ass so of course everybody there is freaking out and somebody says aurora protect us and Emma's like, I heard that. You broke the first commandment, praying to another goddess, and just whips the hell out of the world for her. So now the five John Iron Fire Sinister and Storm are now going to battle. The Doom Bot is trapped on her knees from Rebel. Sinister runs over, takes off his hand, and he's like, and now I have a gun. So this fight scene is pretty chaotic. But I'm going to try my best to navigate you through. So the four gift cut are still whooping ass and taking names. 
Storm pretty much comes in and lets everybody know that they might have four gifts, but she's a mega level mutant and she starts wrecking shop. And then to make her even stronger, Korra gives the rest of her power to Storm. So now we see that some of the five and John Ironfire's dog is taken out by Loud Hailer. But Korra might be depowered at the moment, but she's not helpless. She picks up a sword and she starts taking out some of the chimeras. You got John and Sinister also taking out the chimeras. But Bloodroot isn't as lucky and he gets hit by one of the chimeras. Korra comes to his aid and then you got High Summer that just takes both of them out. So on the next page, you got Storm butt naked in space staring down Emma. Now you can tell she created some kind of atmosphere, it's force field to protect herself. And Emma is just talking all kinds of shit to her. She's like, look, if this was the old Storm, I might be worried. But you, I'm not worried about you. Not at all. And then she's like, you didn't even have time to learn your powers. And Storm hits her with one of the coldest lines I've ever heard Storm say. And then Storm's like, no, I haven't learned. Also haven't learned how to lose. I haven't learned limits, barriers, rules, or fear. All I know is the play of the living sky, the wind, the seasons, and the lightning. And she takes Emma out like that with no problem. But there is one problem. She might be protected from the elements of space, but she is not protected from the radiation that's coming from that explosion. And she gets hit dead on. So she falls to the ground right in front of John and she's telling John to stay away because of the radiation. He ain't hearing it and he's trying to pick her up, cover her up and comfort her. He's like, because of you, we have a shot. Even though Beast is coming, we have a shot. So Storm is telling John Ironfire that it's good to live and she's glad that she was alive, but she's not afraid to. And before she can finish the statement, she dies in his arms. Now, John doesn't even have a moment to shed one tear before Sinister walks behind him with that doom handgun and goes funny. I'm not afraid either and shoots him in the head. Now, Karen Gillan throughout this whole Sins of Sinister had me to the point to where I was actually feeling sorry for Sinister and starting to root for Sinister. And then Al Hewing says, no, He's still that dude. And I just want to get this in before I end this video. Al Hewing has been doing some of the best writing for Storm that I've read in a very long time. X-Men Red is fantastic. The whole becoming the reason of Arako, her relationship with Magneto. I mean, it's been great. And he essentially killed Storm three times in this. I said essentially. I know she didn't die in the first book, but tell me you didn't think she was going to die. I've been loving this whole Sins of Sinister series. I feel like all three writers have been doing a fantastic job. And in saying that, Cy Spurrier, you're on deck. So hopefully this book, if you were feeling bad about Sinister or if you were rooting for Sinister, Al Hewing got you realigned to where you should be again. And in saying that, we're going to end this video the way that Ernie with Blur Without Fear ends his podcast. Mr. Sinister, you could go to hell. <laughs>